Hi, so you had your quiz and now we're going to take some notes reviewing order of operations. Before we do that, I want to give you a couple of more vocabulary words that I've been saying all week, but I want you to go ahead and write them down. So we have talked about expressions. We'll talk about that one in just a minute. Or variables. I want to talk to you about expressions. We've been working with expressions. An expression is a math sentence. I cannot spell today. I'm sorry about that. Sentence without an equal. Okay. So all of the expressions that we've been working with this week to simplify and to solve and all of our exponents expression. So here is an example of an expression. If I said 15 divided by 3 plus 6. This is an expression. Now it may tell you to evaluate that, so then you would go ahead and solve it out. But because there is no equal sign, this is what we call an expression. Sometimes our expressions have variables. And we talked about this word a lot this week. A variable is a letter that represents a value or a number. So earlier this week, we saw maybe a plus 22. And I might tell you a equals 6. So then you could evaluate the expression by plugging the 6 in and solving. So we're going to expand our solving today and we're going to review order of operations. And hopefully this is review for you. Order of operations are very specific. If we don't go in the correct order, it's not going to work out for us. So our order of operations kind of pyramid is parentheses or grouping, depending on what teacher you had in elementary school, right? We have grouping or parentheses. We have E for exponents, which we've already talked about. We have multiply and divide. Now, this is on the same level, multiply divide. And the key here for multiply divide is you have to go in order from left to right. If you don't go in order from left to right, it's not going to work out for you. And then at the bottom of the pyramid, we're going to have add, subtract. So, and again, when we do add, subtract, you have to go in order from left to right. I'm going to do a couple of examples with you so that you can see this order of operations in play. So let's go back up to that expression we wrote earlier. So if I have 15 divided by 3 plus 6, and I'm going to look at my pyramid here, and I'm going to go down it, and we're going to see what we need to do. We have no parentheses, and we have no exponents, so we have multiply divide. Yes, I have a multiply divide. I have a division right here. So we're going to go ahead and divide that. 15 Divided by 3, remember, we talked about in, out. So if you wanted to, you could write it like this. And we should get 5. And then we're going to bring down what's left. That's at the bottom of our pyramid. Add, subtract, 5 plus 6 is 11. So if we were to evaluate using order of operations, this example, we would get 11. I want to give you another example. Um, let's try, and we'll still evaluate. Let's do um, 3 parentheses 6 minus 2, close parentheses, um, divided by 4 plus 10. So here, we have a grouping, we have a parentheses. So we need to do that first. And guys, when you have some longer ones like this, it's really important that you write out each step. 
So I have it into this 3, so I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite it. I can do 6 minus 2, I get 4. And I'm going to rewrite everything else. If you try to do too many steps at once, it's going to get very, very confusing. So I've done my parentheses here. I don't have any exponents, so I'm on to multiply and divide. Now remember, parentheses means multiply, and then I also have a division symbol. So the key for multiply and divide is in order from left to right. It happens to be that multiply is first, so I need to do that first. 3 times 4 is 12, and I'm again writing everything out. I'm not actually done with this level. I still have a division. 3 plus 10. I'm bringing this down. And then I can do my addition for 13. And that is order of operations. Now sometimes we're going to throw some variables in there. And we did a little bit with this. You're not going to have to do this today. But I want you to be aware. If I gave you um, CA, remember, letters next to each other mean multiply, minus AB. Well, that's great. But Mrs. Ray, what are those letters representing? These variables are going to represent these values. So I'm going to tell you A is 6, and B is 3, and C is 7. So we're going to plug these numbers in for the letter, and then we're going to do order of operations. So C is 7. Now remember, this means multiply. So I need to use a dot, or I can use a parentheses for time. A is 6 minus A is 6. And here I'm going to use a dot to show you it doesn't matter which one. Times B is 3. Don't write 63 and 76 because, again, this means multiply. So order of operations, parentheses, this is a different kind of parentheses because there's no operation in it. This parentheses means multiply. No parentheses, no exponent. So I have multiply, divide from left to right. Well, I have two multiplies. I need to do both of those before I can subtract. So 7 times 6 is 42. 6 times 3 is 18. And I'm going to bring down this minus. And now I can finish, and I can say 42 minus 18, don't forget to borrow, is 24. Okay? I have one more for you to try. Same letter. If I gave you, I'm going to write it a little different. 8B, again, multiplying, 8 times in this case, 3, over A. Now, remember, this fraction means divide. So we're going to plug in our number, 8, you can use a dot or a parenthesis, times 3, over 6. You're going to have to solve the top, multiply, divide, numerator before denominator, 24 over 6, and then divide, you get 4. So keep in mind, when you're doing evaluating expressions, you need to always plug in your numbers for the variable. Then always, always, always use your order of operations. So I want you to try this on the Tony paper. Let me know if you have any questions.